Howdy, this is the old gunsmith. Uh, just uh, we're starting a series here on uh, the tools you will need to get started on working on your guns or gunsmithing in general. We'll go over some general uh, tools, some thoughts, some ideas, some considerations that you should have when you're uh, picking your tools or making your bench. And uh, there'll be a series of them. So I hope you enjoy them and let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about hammers and punches. Two things that go together and it's hard to uh, uh, work on guns without them. First of all, we'll talk about hammers. I said there were a lot of tools around the house you could use. This is not one of them. This is not a gunsmithing tool. This is not a gunsmithing tool. This is a gunsmithing tool. You're not driving nails. You're not driving railroad spikes. You're punching out pins. Sometimes you're doing a little peening and a hammer, a small hammer like this, or nothing bigger than this, will do everything you need to do as a gunsmith until, unless you start forging out your own parts. Okay? If you get the forge out, that's different. You also find use for a copper, uh, copper nylon hammer. And the Brownell sells these, and I use this constantly. Uh, anything that needs to be moved or just tapped lightly without marring it, the br nylon brass hammer is the way to go. I think it's a one inch nylon brass hammer. Now, there's several kinds of punches, like everything else, they come in, in varieties. The first one you probably want to look at is a drive punch set. This is a, a set from Sterrett, and I know it's available at Brownells, uh, that gives you several different sizes from uh, a sixteenth of an inch all the way up to five sixteenths with stages in between. And the reason for that is you want to be able to match the diameter of the punch to the pin that you're punching out. Obviously, if you got yourself an old Smith & Wesson top brake here, and you've got pins, and you'll find pins all over the place in the gunsmithing uh, industry. You're not going to use that punch to try and drive them out. That's um, probably not going to do it. So there's no one punch that one size fits all. The little 16th inch punch is pretty close. That'll probably drive that pin out without messing it up or messing up the frame around it. You can always go to the next size up, and that, that pretty much matches exactly. And that's probably the one you want to use. So, punch sets are important. You'll find you've got trigger pins, you've got hinge pins, you've got all kinds of pins used in guns. The 1911, for example, there's a link pin right there. And once again, you go and you find the punch that fits the size of the pin. And you can drive that pin out, and all you need is a small hammer. And tap on it lightly, and then increase the... Uh, uh, power that you tap with as you need to to get the pin out. Uh, a, another type of punch is a roll pin punch. A roll pin punch looks a lot like the drive punches. It's got a parallel section here and you'll notice there's a little bump on the top. What that does is on things like this, which is a, an honor guard pistol, there's a little roll pin in here holding in your extractor. And once again, you need to match the punch to the size of the roll pin. That little uh, bump on the top fits in the middle of the roll pin so that as you're pounding on it, you don't collapse it. You don't collapse the sides. It maintains the, the uh, edges uh, or the end of the pin so that when you put it back in, you still have tension all the way to the edge. And you don't, dry, don't fold the edge in on the uh, inside of the... Uh, hollow section in the center of the pin to where you make it look ugly. This will do the job. Again, as I said, they come in all sizes, starting at a sixteenth and going up to something that probably, you'll probably never find a gun with a roll pin that big, but who knows. I know they've got roll pins on the AR-15 if you're an AR-15 guy. If I find a gun with a roll pin that's that big, mm. I think I'm going to be smiling. You think so? Yeah. Probably a 50 BMG or something. Something, something. You know, something like that. Something makes a big boom. <laughs> <clears throat> the butt of a lot of jokes is that one. 
Uh, this is a little stereo tool that is almost invaluable if you know how to use it. If you are trying to place a, um, to drill a hole, you're going to use a pin punch to smack it and put the hole, put a, a starting uh, divot in it so that your drill doesn't walk and goes exactly where you want the hole to be. We'll use this old piece of metal just as for something to talk about. You can mark the location that your uh, hole is going to go and then you use the magnifying glass on here to take the point of the starting punch, the starter punch, and put it right on the exact spot and you tip it up like that and you go and you've got your drill is going to go right exactly where you want it to. Real helpful on uh, like round pieces, uh, you're trying to find the exact center. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, we, we always made fun of this uh, because you, you look at it and say, what are you, you going to use that for? It actually has an ex exceedingly important use because if you get that hole off a little bit, you get that punch off a little bit and the hole doesn't line up with the, the next piece, you're going to have a hell of a time getting the <laughs> screw through because they'll be offset. So it's, it's a really important uh, uh, little tool and not something you need from the very beginning but a great tool to have and as i say here's a um, and i used that i think uh, in my video for uh, uh when we cut the barrel down on the mosin and we had to drill holes for the new ramp site there you go um, I, I used that tool because uh, i knew what size my hole was and i was trying to get my starting point exactly center so that the screws would fit that's exactly what it's for uh, this for example is a uh, receiver from a savage 311 side by side double it's got pins that have to be driven out that both the uh, uh, hammers, this is a hammer uh, pivot pin, goes on and you want to match that as closely as possible. You can drive those pins out without damaging them. So I would suggest that if you're just getting started, you look at a pin punch set like that. You can drive roll pins out with a pin punch set, you have to be careful. The uh, the roll pin punches I showed you is kind of an advanced tool for a guy who's doing a lot of pistol work, where there's uh, the new uh, AR-15 work where there are roll pins that need to be driven in and out. Um, so that's kind of almost a specialty tool. Other types of punches, you have a, a nylon tip punch, a brass tip punch, and a brass tip punch can come in various diameters. What you generally use those for is driving sights. If you're trying to adjust the sight that's in a dovetail, the thing I always hated about this, of course, is when you're out on the bench by yourself, like that. when you're trying to, 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 to drive that sight by yourself, you need, you need a couple of extra hands to hold it. But that's what this is for. Anytime you're driving a sight, whether it be on a rifle or a uh, uh, handgun, and you need to move it in its dovetail, use a brass tip punch, and the brass tip punch will not peen the sight over, and the brass the mark that leaves behind can be taken off with steel wool. An even better tool, from my point of view, and I hate to, to, to get commercial, this is called the Wyoming Sight Drifter. Uh, this is available uh, from Steve Anderson in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And I've been using this lately, and I love it. Because if I'm at the range, and I want to move this sight, I have a brass piece of uh, material to do the driving, and a spring-loaded hammer to move that sight. I don't need to have three hands whether it be on a rifle barrel or a uh, rear sight like this, a 1911, or this particular case, a Polish Radom. And you can, you can either tap it lightly or pull it back and really hit it. That has become one of my favorite range tools. It generally rides in my range bag. So if I need to adjust a, a, a sight on a rifle or a handgun, Wyoming Sight Drifter, something to keep in mind. Uh, that's that's something that even a just a shooter, not a gunsmith, can use.
And uh, Steve is a really nice guy. I bought this from him. I think they're about 35 bucks. They're not cheap. And good gunsmithing tools rarely are. Uh, so that, uh, that kind of covers uh, roll pins, or pin punches, and hammers. Uh, again, don't overpower your work. All right? You can drive a roll pin in to where you hit this area where it widens and actually mushroom the hole. So don't overpower the work. If Don't use a big hammer where a small hammer will do. You have much more control with this. You're not as likely to hit it too hard. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you've liked what you've just seen, we're going to be doing some more of them. We'll cover a lot of the basic tools uh, to get started. Uh, just stay tuned, watch the uh, Alpha Charlie Papa channel, and we'll have some more uh, ideas for you. <laughs> for now, happy trails. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.